It's only up from here. It's only up from here. We won't stop. We won't stop now. It's only up from here. It's only up from here. It's only up from here. I hear Lord say, pick up your head and don't go weary. It's only up.
Just fill us to overflowing, Lord. We want to be carriers of everything that we felt tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. As Kevin gets ready to come here in a moment, we just want to thank you. On behalf of Warrior Notes, thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of, of this ministry and a partner in and we're just so glad you're here. And uh, if you're a student, if you're a partner, if you want to be a partner, we're just glad you're here to be a part of this. And uh, on your seat, you saw, we're not going to take up an offering, but on your seat, you saw an offering envelope. If the Lord should uh, touch your heart to give tonight, there's a place that you can put that in the basket on the way out. We certainly appreciate that. But are you happy to be here tonight? Was this glorious or what? I mean, come on. Well, if, if you're excited and I'm excited, I think we're ready to go. Let's welcome Dr. Kevin Zadai. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Tampa. <laughs> well, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in your life. And um, I know that he's moving, but don't get left out. How many people like to get be left out? Nobody, right? Well, God's included you in on his plan, as we know. And, you know, it's just time. It's time to just relax and be yourself and let God use you in a, in a mighty way in these last days. How many want to be a history maker? Amen. Well, stop trying and just do it. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, it's not an emotional thing. Emotions are to enjoy something after you've done the right thing without your emotions. It's, it's just an extra added thing that's added to your life. Because I don't judge things by my emotions because they, they come and go. Just like people come and go. Say amen. Okay. Um, thank you for... For coming, and I just want to honor the partners in every city. Um, we'll be going. We'll be going back overseas here. We're actually just had somebody go over and and help us to secure a place in Dubai. And of course, when Switzerland opens up, we'll be going back there in Germany. And uh, there's uh, several other countries that I won't mention now, but, but we've got partners over the world. So we're going to be doing things like this, partner-wise, all over the world. But um, we're still going to do our spirit schools every month. And as you remember, the, the Lord put on my heart to, um, to stop doing them every week. We were doing it every week, and um, I wanted to go back to work so I could rest at Southwest Airlines. I thought it was 13-hour days were bad, but now it's 17-hour days. So anyway... Um, the Lord had put it on my heart just to do one a month, and that'll quadruple. So we, we did that. We, we rented convention centers instead of churches, and sure enough, just like he said, there are between 12 and 1,800 people show up in our spirit schools now, so every month. So how many participate in our spirit schools? Okay. Well, just so you know, you partners, you're, you, really, you really shine in that because... Because of your giving, we actually uh, provide the study guide that I write. I write one every month just about that we teach out of. That is provided by, by the finances that you give monthly to support that. So we, we open it up to the public, and we let anybody come. We give them a study guide and a CD, and then I teach out of it. And it's the same with the YouTube. I provide that for the public, and, and you are the ones that are 
are supporting that. So I don't charge for any of that stuff, and I don't charge for my conferences. And that was one of the problems I had is that some places where I would go, they were charging, you know, 30 to up to, I think, some places were really high, like 60 bucks. I'm not worth that much, you know, 60 bucks. A, so I want to do it for free, and I would tell people, listen, you know, I ain't coming back if you're going to charge just for people to see me and you know, hear me speak. I, you know, we do it on YouTube for free, you know. So anyway, uh, thank you, partners, for, for everything you're doing. And God is expanding us. And as, as it keeps growing and God provides the finance, because I will not go into debt, we pay cash for everything. I said everything. <laughs> Amen. And so it doesn't, it doesn't matter if God tells you to do something, if he's really sincerely speaking to you, then he is going to make provision for your vision. And in heaven, I saw that he gives you and provides for you first. It's there. It's in a storehouse. And then he gives you a vision. So your provision is set before your vision comes to you. Because in heaven, there are no clocks. You're always on time. <laughs> and you can actually show up early. In fact, you could leave and show up, bef show up before you left. <laughs> and pass yourself on the way. But of course, some of us are so busy, we actually do that every day anyway. We pass ourselves in the hallway. But in heaven, God does things seemingly backwards. So if you are getting hit by the devil, if you had misfortune, if you had things happen, I mean, I've been stolen from. I don't like it. I don't like to be mocked or lied about. I don't, I don't like any of those things that the devil does. Jesus said that the thief, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. All right, so is John 10.10 10 true? Yes. Okay, is Acts 10.38 true? Jesus went around doing good, not doing bad. He went around doing good and making people sick or healing all of those who were oppressed of the devil. Because what? God was with him. Well, of course he was with him. He was the son of God. Okay, so in John chapter 1, verse 12... I hope you're not nervous because I'm using scripture. I mean, my dad, my dad, before he became a Christian, he would argue with me because I was, I was not going to go to the Air Force Academy because I, I, I felt called to the ministry. Well, that didn't go over well. And I, it wasn't my choice. I'd rather be flying jets. And Oh, that's right, I am. That's right. But, anyway. <laughs> but see, what happens is is God already has things lined up for us, but it's not in the same order that we would like it. But my dad would argue with me before he became a Christian, and he was a professional sax player for 65 years. And we could not afford for me to have a saxophone or anything. And so I never got to play any instruments My dad was so talented, and I loved him, but he would argue with me, and I would say, yes, but the Bible says. And he goes, well, don't bring that into it. And he would argue with me about Christianity, but I wasn't allowed to use the Bible. And I said, Dad, it's the whole foundation of what we believe in. And after a while, and my wife, Kathy, she's here, and she's going to come up and talk to you in a little bit. But we were at Thanksgiving right, right be, two years before he passed. And he sat there at the table and, and wept. My dad never cries. He's never told me he loved me. Oh, that's right. He did on a phone one time when I was in college. He sat there and wept. And he said, I am a Christian today because of this man. And he pointed to me. And he told my wife, he said, he said, God is with this man. There's no way that he can do what he's doing unless God was with him. I saw God worked through this man. He watched me pull a saxophone out of a box and play it when it took him a year to get a sound out of that sax. 
Not that particular one. That one's brand new. But he said, you made an album with that saxophone, and you never took a lesson. And I watched you pull it out of the box and play it. I go, yeah, I do that with a lot of instruments, Dad. And I would tell him, this is what I would tell him. I said, Dad, I am believing I need a car for college. When I went to finish my bachelor degree, I went for my two-year program. I needed a car because I wasn't on campus. So I said, so I was talking to him, and I said, Dad, I said, uh, I am believing for, and I named the exact make a car, the year, and the amount I'm going to pay for it. And within two weeks, I had that car for that amount. But it was interesting that the only reason I got that amount was because the person who was selling it forgot to add a zero <laughs> in the newspaper. So he had to sell it to me for that. I feel bad. If I ever find that man, I will, I will give him some more money. I kind of feel bad. But he was, anyway, God does things differently, but he knows the end from the beginning. He is the beginning and the end. Okay, so because you encounter sickness or you encounter poverty or you encounter anything, bondage, mishaps, mis, mis, uh, misfortune, if you want to call it that. It's, but see, appointments... Are, th are things that are written or are established, and you are going to make that appointment. But if you have distance between you and your appointment, it's called a disappointment. If you have courage that you're going toward, but there's distance between that and you're not experiencing courage, it's called discouragement. So there's distance between you and your appointment. Dis-ease. There is distance between you and ease. Is everybody following me? So God does not have the same limitations as we do. So he stands on where you're going, and he says, the weather's fine, just come to me. So Jesus always wants us to come to him and seek him. That's why it says, seek the first the kingdom and all of its righteousness. And all the other things shall be added unto you. You will find in this life that what you really want is you want God. And when you get God, he has provision. I'm telling you the truth. You do not stare at things. There's ease in the, in the presence of God. There's ease in the glory of God. There's, there's a piece about Jesus and almost a grin because he knows more than you do. Imagine that. And every time he spoke, he said, it's not me that speaks. It's my Father in heaven. He is the one that is speaking through me. I represent him, and I've come. And the Pharisees, who were the religious people of the day, the established religion, they had been given the law. God gave ten commandments. By that time they were done with it, they had 613. Oh, yeah. 
And Jesus had to correct them many, many times. And of course, they don't like being corrected. But he said, you know what? Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. He, he said the tithe was not, was, was, was not first. Man was first. And the tithe was given to help man. The Sabbath was given to help man. Because we would work seven days a week. And if we did not give a portion back to God, we would not have control of our desire for more. We would always think after a while that it was us. The whole idea about the tree in the garden was is that that was the tithe. God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden and said, do not touch this. The reason he had to do that is because Adam and Eve were made in the image of God and they would start to think they were God. But they were an image. They were not God. But they were so close and they experienced eternal life. They experienced everything that God experienced except for one thing. They could not handle knowing evil and still do good after they knew it because they were seducible. They could not handle knowing evil. They were not made to handle evil, but God could know evil and still just do good. He could not be seduced. He could not be tempted. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So now, today, we have the Spirit inside of us, and He is the one that has been given until the end of the age. We will not be left as orphans, Jesus said, until the end. He will be with us actually forever. But there is a dispensation that is ending, and another one will begin. But until that happens, we have the Holy Spirit. He's not in heaven. He is here on the earth. He's been given, right? Okay. So all of Christianity, which is not being emphasized, and it's why the, the, the Pharisees of today are allowed to take advantage of you. And I have to tell you, don't listen to them anymore. You're not under the law. The law is written in your hearts. The Holy Spirit is the enforcer of the covenant. He is the one that convicts you. He is the one that is supposed to rule you. However, the liability, you know, there's liabilities as well. God's made him, God made himself vulnerable when he gave us a free will. It was a liability because we could actually say no to anything he said. So when they were discussing making man, the whole idea was that they would have to give man a free will in order to make them like them. Do you understand me? Does everybody understand that? So they knew that the liability was there. So Jesus was slain. The book of Revelation says that Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world, which means it's rigged. It was planned. Why? Because of liability. He put him, he didn't put money in the insurance account for you. He put himself in the account for you. He put himself preemptively and then they made man. Then they made the earth. They made the earth. They made man. After Jesus put himself up. He posted himself and said, okay, we're good to go. Go ahead. Breathe away, Father. Make Adam. He could have made Eve the same way he made Adam, but he didn't. He took Eve out of man. 
That is the way that he wanted to do it. That's the way it is. Okay? So Jesus invested in you before you were born. Before Adam was formed out of the earth, Jesus had already posted himself in the account. So God is self-insured. So the Aflac duck, you know, he's, he's not involved. Either is Geico or the Gecko or Snoopy. No insurance company. God posted his son as Baal. Essentially, everything is set up now, and then they made man. But see, they formed the earth. They made the earth first. They didn't make it for themselves. They, they already had everything they need. Heaven is a beautiful place. It's much larger, much more of everything. But the earth was made, and then man was placed in it so that God could come down and visit him every day and Eve, okay? Can you imagine God's intention for man? Never to be sick, never die, never to know about evil. But he placed that tree in the garden so that man would always be reminded that they are not God and that that is God's. That tree was never man's, the knowledge of good and evil tree. Satan knew that if he got them to eat that, that it would place a wedge between them and God and then he could take them away and take the earth away. That is why Paul said many times that the God of this world, which is the evil one, Satan, the prince of the power of the air, right? Okay, he is ruling over those who have no resistance to him because they have not experienced the new birth. Christians that are born again and believe in Jesus Christ, and as John says in chapter 1, verse 12, he said, those who embraced him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. We were restored back to Adam, who was a son of God. Not the son of God, but he was the first Adam. Jesus was the second Adam. You all follow me? I skipped the dinosaurs and UFOs because I got to keep going here. All right, so, at the end of the age, the church is supposed to be the ruling class on the earth because Jesus said that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Well, then why did COVID? I'm just asking, why, why, why do we get sick? Why, why? Are we not having our provision? Well, it's because we're in a war. And things don't just come to you. So, these men and women who had faith, they were noted in the Bible as having faith because they saw him who was invisible. They were looking for a city whose builder and maker was God, it says. So tonight, it is time for you as Christians to realize what has been invested in you and that it is set up for you to finish out with a beautiful display at the end of this age. And I am brave enough to continue to preach the good news of the gospel until he comes back, not in between diseases or anything else that happens. Come on. I am still going to stand against disease. I am going to still. I mean, we have people on our staff that have been miraculously healed. 
And I'm not talking about petty little things. I'm talking about they couldn't walk because they had MS. Tumors disappear. Okay, it's not because of anyone's particular walk with God or they had a good day or a bad day, whether they fasted or they had a biggie fry and a triple with cheese. They had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with not taking no for an answer if it is stated that God is still on the earth doing miracles, which he still is. The, the time will come when we reach perfection. Paul said there is coming a time where tongues will cease, miracles will cease, prophecy will cease, because we will be perfect, perfected in love. I haven't met a perfect person yet, except for Jesus. I don't think we're there to where all of this can cease. So there is plenty. Now, I'm trying to offend people here, so I haven't offended everyone yet. So there is plenty of money on the earth. It's just in the wrong hands. This is why I say that. You can see I'm not going to use this tonight. Okay. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He made earth. He made it for man, but he made it for Adam and Eve when they were walking with him and having fellowship with him. The thing that happened now is the earth fell. And guess what? We fell with it. Fluffy fell with us. All the animals fell. Everybody fell. We're all groaning. We're all under a curse. We encounter sickness, disease, disappointment, discouragement. We, we have miss, 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 uh, missed chances. But as long as I still have breath, as long as I keep waking up every morning, I am going to believe God. I am going to believe God for miracles for you. I'm going to believe that God's word is true because this earth and this world, it was made for his people. Now, the earth has fallen, people have fallen, and there's a bunch of crazy people out there. And they don't want God. But why should they spoil our party? Right? Okay, so, thank you. But the celebration in heaven is, is that Jesus Christ has accomplished everything that he had in his, desire, his heart. The desires of the Father were done. Now he is seated. When he's seated, that means there ain't much going to happen except observe. It says that he is waiting in the scripture. It says he's waiting for his enemies to become his footstool through the church who has the keys. So I don't... I don't, I don't um, think that God has keys because he said, whatever you bind on the earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you permit on the earth is permitted in heaven. Whatever you forbid is forbidden. He said, even if you go and you say to a person that your sins are forgiven, they shall be forgiven. It's in the Bible. Well, why is that? Because we have a ministry of reconciliation. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we have a ministry of reconciliation, which is the statement that Paul makes is we are to go forth and announce that people's sins are forgiven, that the price has been paid. So Jesus is seated. He's not going to die again for anyone else. Amen. He's not going to come back and die for aliens <laughs> or any other race. There, there is no other race that is in the image of God except man. Jesus is seated, and now he's waiting. He is waiting for us to bring his enemies so he can put his foot on their head. That's what the scripture says. My dad is up there in glory. All of my spiritual fathers, all my... My trainers, every, everybody that has dumped into me, they're in heaven rooting me on. 
Everyone has gone forth that, that made it to heaven is rooting you on because now they got the big picture and they see that there is plenty of finances on the earth. It's just in the wrong hands. God wants to give you an idea that you make it manifest and it, it's a patent. There's a patent number by your name in heaven, possibly. My, my brother is an engineer. He has patents. He's a smart guy. But don't you think that up in heaven, the book that was written about him, those patent numbers were listed before he was born. I mean, if you want to bring scripture into it, he wrote a book about us. Each day was written in a book before one of them came to pass. Okay, Psalms 139. 16 in any translation, even the nearly inspired version. Okay, so when Lazarus dies, Jesus does not react even when he got the news that he was sick. He kept like just, you know, going around ministering and they're like, you know, yo, your, your friend is sick. And he waited and waited and waited. And Jewish, Jewish scholars have told me that there was this idea that the human spirit stayed with the body three days. And then on the fourth day, it was impossible for a person to be revived. So Jesus went ahead and waited till the fourth day. To make it impossible. So what, what, why are you trying to figure out how God's going to get you out of your pickle? Your situation. So they run up to him and this is what they say. This is, this is what I want to talk about tonight. You got to keep on going. You cannot back off. You got to keep going. I know people who are millionaires because they w decided by a unction of their spirit by the Holy Spirit to drill another 50 feet for oil. When they were ready to cap it, they went 50 feet down more and got a gusher. Now, what if they would have capped it? What if they had given up? See, you don't give up. If you have breath, you do not give up. You praise God and you worship him and you talk about how great he is. You tell him that. He loves to hear it. He loves to hear how good he is. He loves to hear that you're nothing, but he's everything. He loves it when you, you say, I'm not going anywhere unless you go with me. I don't think about failure. Because God does not think about failure. I believe that we are at the edge of something very beautiful. But it has to do with you. It has to do with discerning late. Why did Jesus wait to come to help Lazarus? And they said, oh, if you had come, Lord, you could have saved him. And Jesus said something profound. He said, just believe. He's just asleep. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, Lazarus has died, and for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there. So that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called, Thomas talk, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. <laughs> yeah, that's, so this guy's, this guy's been mentored by Jesus for three and a half years. I don't think he's going to pass his check ride, Lou. <laughs> that 
That's what they said. They said, you know, they, they, had, they, had, they had already threatened to stone him. Let me, let me back up here. Um, Jesus, he, he dropped the big one, a big bomb on him. He said, uh, they picked up stones to, to stone him in the previous paragraph. This is what he says. It says, my father who has given has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And it says they went to pick up stones. This is what just happened before they went to Lazarus, okay? And so they picked up stones, the Pharisees did, to stone him. And he goes, why are you going to stone me? Because, he goes, because of the many works? And they go, no, because you claim to be equal with God. This is what he said. Oh, isn't it written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Pointing to them, which it does say. Ye are gods. If they called him gods to whom the word of God came, you know, from Moses on the mountain, and the scripture cannot be broken, you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into this world, you are blaspheming because... I, I call myself the son of God, he said. If I am not doing the works of my father, then, then do not believe me. Okay, that's what just happened. So when they said, let's just go and die with him, they had already threatened to stone him. Okay, so going back to Lazarus, it says that Jesus wept because they were all weeping. And they thought, you know, the Lord's really identifying with us here. You see, and, and they said, oh, see how he loved him. And Jesus, you know, really not in the original language, but in English, that is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. But I want to show you something about Jesus that you might, you might want to consider. Jesus is about to die on a cross and go even deeper than where Lazarus is. And he knows that they are full of unbelief. He, and he says this, I am the resurrection and the life. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he did. And I want to announce to you, my beloved family and partners, that the Lord is announcing to you to come forth and live. Amen. I have already been back 28 and a half years past the dead zone. So 28 years is a gift to me, and every day is a gift to me. And I wake up every morning, did it this morning, and announced to my wife, yes. Because that's our covenant. That's our deal. Whoever wakes up first yells out to the angels and yells out to God and says, count me in, yes. I don't argue with God. I don't give him my opinion. I just say, you know what? Whatever is on the roster, whatever is written about me in my books, me and my wife are going to do that. I don't know everything. I, I actually just act like I do know what's going on, and I just do it. And the Lord performs miracles before me. It comes to pass because I actually do something. I just get up, and I breathe, and I say yes, and I wait on God. And while I'm waiting on God, I feed the poor. I help people. I go and I encourage people. I have no bad news. So people way above me, way better than me, way bigger than me that you see on TV, they're way better than me. And I'm fine with that. They ask me, well, what's, what's going on? What's the Lord saying? What's the news? I go, I have no bad news. Right? Every week when we get to call, that's what Kathy, we have no bad news. Everything's going wonderful, very good. At Christmas time, 
I said, I, I do have a problem. And you know, my spiritual father's like praying. He's like, okay, let me have it. What is it? We have a problem. We have too much money. <laughs> I did, right? Did I? We have too much money. The ministry has too much money. Now, no minister is going to stand up to their partners and tell them we have too much money. Do you see me as scared or afraid? Do you see a stress crack here? Do you see ushers with buckets? Okay, I said we have too much money, and this is what I said. The value of money in the bank is not worth as much as it is when it's in assets. When it's being put to work and doing something, it's just like a sidearm. I was asked by my trainer, they, he put his sidearm on the table, and they, he asked everyone, is this dangerous? And everybody said yes. And he goes, no. It's not dangerous until someone who knows how to use it takes it and puts it in their hand. And the Lord spoke to me. This guy's not even a Christian. He actually guarded one of our presidents. He said, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you listen to that man. He was secret service. You listen because he said it's the same with money. Money is not worth anything until it is in the right hands with someone who knows how to use it. Okay, it's the same way with us. If there is life in us, if there is a part of us that lives forever, if there is a born-again experience, if, of course there is. If Jesus was correct, if the Word of God is correct, if God has exceedingly above what we could ask or think, if He is going to provide for us not just our needs but our wants, if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That is not need. That is want. Jesus said, ask what you desire, whatever you will, and it shall be done for you, not whatever you need. And it's in the Greek, the Hebrew, and the homebrew. <laughs> whatever translation, the provision, you see, God owned everything at one time. He owns you. You just don't know it. He is actually using your body right now. Paul said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live now is by faith in the Son of God. One translation says, it's as though Jesus has borrowed my body and is doing his ministry through me. Well, what would God do if he really had you? Well, I'm going to sit and watch. Because I'm going to watch a display of his glory through people. So you think, oh, that, that person, you know, they must pray a lot. You know, and you try to figure out, like, okay, you reverse engineer everything. And you try to figure out, okay, how could I get that? And what I found is you got to get over yourself because you really are your worst enemy sometimes. Who told you? Like, like he said, God said, who told you you were naked? He told me, who told you that? Well, he's told me. He goes, who told you you can't do that? He goes, I didn't. I'm like, yeah, who did tell me I couldn't do that? And so all of a sudden, I forgot that I can't do things, and I find myself doing them. And everyone else is what, like, how did you just do that? Do what? And I realized that we weren't made to be limited. We're in a fallen world that's broken. Okay, that was a good introduction. I'm so glad you all came. But God wants to put things in your hand that are for someone else. But can he trust you? Can he trust you? There's plenty of provision. It's just in the wrong hands. <laughs> I want to be a distribution center. I want to be trusted. I know you do too. Okay, so Lazarus came forth. Now this is, now listen, you got you to gotta know what's going to happen next. As soon as the Pharisees saw that Lazarus was raised from the dead, and Jesus is standing there with Lazarus. They, said, they plotted, it says, the scripture says they plotted to kill him and 
the evidence, Lazarus. They plotted to kill both of them. They got to get rid of the evidence. So listen, if they can't get rid of you, they will discredit you. If they can't get rid of a witness, you know, people disappear. You know? If they can't get rid of you, they will discredit you. The enemy, this, the devil, is known as the slanderer. You are bombarded all the time with doubt and fear and misinformation. Jesus said, if you will believe, nothing shall be impossible with you, for you. Angels are sent to minister for you. They are sent to do the will of God. Angels are here now. They, they are always with you. They're always here. If something bad happens to you, it is not their fault. They are not your cleanup crew. You know, a pastor in, in, uh, in the 50s, I read, he got up and he kept telling they were all oil-filled workers and people were dying because it was a dangerous job with all that stuff, with the rigs and all that, you know. And they were dying. But then when he looked into, you know, so-and-so, we lost so-and-so this week, it all had to do, listen, safety issues. Safety issues. They did not adhere to the rules of safety. So... It says on the sign, do not pull this lever and unless the mat is in place because you become part of the circuit. When you pull this, if the mat isn't there to stop it, you became part of the wiring. That's not good. And unless you want to be a Christmas tree. And people were dying. I mean, I could go on and on. So, but this is what he said. It's my favorite statement. <laughs> he said, but it was amazing how God didn't take people when they adhered to the safety rules. God didn't take as many people. <laughs> they didn't die. Well, did God really take them? Okay. So how many times is it really our fault? And we say, okay, if God wants me to live another day, then I will. So... You're going to cheat... With safety, because then what happens is you're taking advantage of God's grace, and the angels are not your cleanup crew. They're not with you to keep you from being hit in, a, in an intersection when you go through a red light. They can do that, but maybe it's better just to stop. Just Clean your dashboard or something for that th one minute and 30 seconds. You know, it's, you don't, yellow to me means stop. Yellow means something is coming and it ain't green, it's red. Okay, so. <laughs> this is how people get hurt and die early. Okay, it's the same thing with everything else. Now just apply this to every area of your life. Sometimes you have to control the outflow instead of the inflow. And the Lord showed me principles. He said, uh, 
I can cut your electric bills in half in your house. I go, I'm all for it. I was in Phoenix, Arizona. I would go out running at night and it was still 101. That was the cool of the day. Okay, so my air conditioner ran all the time. All, I mean, all the time. I don't think it ever stopped except maybe Christmas Eve when it got down to 64. <laughs> maybe, I'm just kidding with you. It actually got called it. But the Lord said, okay. He started showing me things in my house. I did all that. It cost me under $1,000 to insulate my house. Did it myself, just watch videos on YouTube. And my bills were cut in half. You see, it was, it was leaving me. It was escaping from me. So sometimes it's not what's coming in. Are you being stolen from? In the last one minute, you have encountered thoughts that were not from you. You've encountered feelings that weren't from you. Will you let those get you off course? You know, there is, there is no real perfect scenario. There's not really a perfect scenario. Like in aviation, there's not a perfect approach or landing because everything is different every time. Can you be flexible like Gumby? Do you remember Gumby or are you you're too young? Can you be flexible enough to handle? Like the, the whole idea is to be able in life to, to maintain your course. And things that oppose you you don't focus on that. You manage that. You manage your emotions. You manage these thoughts. Who told you that you can't do this? Who told you that you're not worth anything? It wasn't God. He already proved you're worth something. He placed his son in escrow. <laughs> before you were born. Before you messed up. I get like this a couple times a month, I get this edge about me because I love people, but I'm telling you, you're being robbed. You're being stolen from right now. The devil wants your dreams. He wants your vision. He wants your hearing in the spirit. He, he wants you to do nothing. He'd love for you to work for him like Peter did with his mouth. When he spoke, and Jesus had to, to talk to Satan instead of his own disciple. Jesus had to address him as the devil. Say, get behind me, Satan. And Peter's like, oh, I am in trouble now. And he's like, Lord, I'm, you know, like, can you imagine? Like, I don't know what got over me. He goes, Jesus goes, well, you know, I know what got all over you. Okay. Peter was with Jesus for three and a half years left everything, and yet had just failed. Why? He yielded to a feeling and an idea that was not correct. You see, they all were waiting for a Messiah that would come and push Rome out. Jesus never spoke against Rome. He even told them to pay their taxes. He said, this is Caesar's, give to Caesar's what is Caesar's. And then he said, give to God what is God's on the coin. They thought that the Messiah was going to place himself on a throne and rule over Israel. That's why the triumphal entry. But the next day, when he had not done that, it just flip the page in your Bible from the triumphal entry. You know, uh, palm branches and, you know, 
umbrella drinks, and we're, everybody's really celebrating and happy. Fireworks that night, I'm sure. And yet, the next day, they took Jesus, and they were going to put him over the brow of the hill. They were going to throw him off the hill and kill him. Am I right? One flip of the page. Peter. The flip of the page, he said, Jesus said, who do you say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, this hasn't been given to you by man. This has been given to you by my father in heaven. Flip the page, one page. The Lord says, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be crucified at the hands of man. I'm going to die, be buried, and rose on the third day. He tells them on the third day he's going to be raised from the dead. How many people were at the tomb on the third day waiting for him to come back? Zero. But he announced it. You could, you could rewind the security tape. He said it. Though you get my point, though, okay? All right, so he, he had this all set up to go and die. So when Peter said, no, no, because, see, no, you're going to set yourself up, and you're going to push Rome out. You're going to be our king. Do you follow me? That's what the zealots were doing. The zealots, they had two of them on board as disciples. They were part of this. Barabbas failed a coup. <laughs> You're just looking at me. Why do you think they asked? Do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? They thought, we'll take Barabbas, we'll give him another try. I'm serious. See, because people have this idea of what they want. Okay? But God's intention is far greater, and only through revelation, Jesus said, upon this revelation, Peter, I'm going to build my church. He didn't say he's going to build his church on Peter. He said on this revelation, this foundation, this rock. Peter was not that good. Now, either are we. Okay, so... The redemption is made complete. You have been made complete in Christ. You are his workmanship. You display his glory. So Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He said two things. He said, this is so that my father gets glory and so your joy may be full. So looking at your faces, I don't know if you're quite there. Are you full of joy yet? Okay, you're getting there, right? Why? Because you're asking. And whatever you ask in my name, it shall be given to you. Yeah, but it didn't happen. Ask anything in my name, and it shall be done. Well, when is it going to happen? Ask anything in my name, and it shall be given. I'm never given up. I'm not going to be denied. I believe that I would publish a book. Now I'm believing for a publishing company. I'm, I work for an airline. Now I want an airline. It's a special plane that I want. I want six of them. They're really cool airplanes. I, I feel like a little kid. I was going to get six toys. I'm going to like park them and play with them. Why? Because I have vision, and the provision is already provided because of my, the vision that's been given to me. It's the reverse of what you think. You're like, okay, God gave me this vision, now I gotta believe for provision. No, no, it doesn't work that way. He invested in you before you were born. Now, is this, this is hard because it's, Cause and effect. But cause and effect is observation. I, I, I walk off this platform. I don't walk into the air. 32 feet per second comes to meet me. And it wins. 
and unless I have something that can overcome that law. Well, the law of the spirit of life, Paul said, has defeated and overcome, superseded the law of sin and death. The, the law of the spirit is greater. I'm quoting Paul. He, he has put an end to sin in you. He's put it to death. But you, through the Spirit, Paul says, through the Spirit put to death the misdeeds of the body. You. He's taking care of the sin problem through the blood. But you must put to death the misdeeds of the body. You must put an end to debt. You have to take your authority and say, listen, I'm turning the outflow. I'm, I'm scaling it back. I'm going to manage my life. I'm going to manage not just my income, but my outflow. It's better to own. than to borrow or to rent. But your mindset, it's become normal to be in debt. It is not normal to owe anybody anything. The Old Testament Hebrew people, they were told, if you choose this day to obey the Lord your God and do what is right, these things are going to come to pass. You will be the head, not the tail. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. What do you not understand about that? In Deuteronomy 15.4, it says, There shall be no poor among you, for I am the Lord your God who has promise to take you into the land of Canaan, the land of pr pr plenty. Okay, is that just a Sunday school Bible story, or did that really happen? Okay, that's Old Testament, Old Covenant. The dis disciples that are now apostles say that now this new covenant, based on better promises through the blood of Jesus, better promises? Well, Peter said, that through these promises, we can be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature? Partakers of the divine nature? The only thing that God needs to borrow is your body. It'll take your mind with you. In, in a package deal. He'll just take your mind and he'll take your body. He has your spirit if you're a born again Christian, but you have to manage your body. You have to manage your mind. And you have been infiltrated with thoughts about what God's will is that is not true. You're waiting for the Messiah to set himself up as physical king and you're about to miss the whole thing. And Jesus stood the night before he passed away and went to hell to the belly of the earth, and was risen on the third day. He looked over Jerusalem, and he said, How I long to gather you together as a mother hen gathers her chicks. He said, But you wouldn't have it. He said, You did not discern your day of visitation. He spoke to John on the Isle of Patmos, and he warned them, hear what the Spirit is saying to the seven churches. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who overcomes will sit with me victorious on a throne. Amen. I wish that you were either hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. That's still in the Bible. Now listen, 
I feel at times as though Christianity has become like Veggie Tales, where you encounter the people of Jericho and they're throwing blueberry slushies at you from the wall. And I think it's a little bit more than that, but that's good for kids. But when we grow up, I don't have blueberry slushies coming at me because I would catch them and drink them. But because what I have coming at me is you can't do that. You're not going to succeed at that. No one's going to believe you. And I just let the devil keep talking and I go and I do it. And he's not even finished yet. And what he's doing is he's flipping through his chart. Okay, will you believe this? And he's telling you a bunch of trash. Will you believe this? Like, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe anything you say. Why are you even here, Satan? Why do you even talk to me? Why was Eve talking to him? Okay, so, as I have said every night in every city we've been to so far, you are problem solvers. You have a solution to a problem, and you're going somewhere to give that solution to someone who has a problem. You are the answer to someone's problem. You, your, your value has gone through the roof because God has placed a demand on your gift. He has placed a demand on something he put in you, in all of us. We, there's a demand on your gift. I need you. I need what you have in you. I need you to show up. And I need you to do it in Z formation. I need you to have an attitude about it. Oh, no, we're not going to do that here. It's a new sheriff in town. You know, I've done the research about this place. And Tampa is, is all, God's already got plans for Tampa. Or wherever you're at. God has plans. I'm serious. I, I... I thoroughly think that that airport is built so that I can land on it. I, I, I think like the satellites, everything that is made, this microphone, it was made. No, God knew that someday I would hold this microphone and talk to you. So when this was being made by someone probably was speaking Chinese or Japanese and they, was, they were building it. God was using that person to do something that was going to help someone else, Amen. right? Every part has a serial number on it. God knew that that serial number was going to be on that particular car or that particular jet, and you were going to go in that particular vehicle Amen. to go and do God's will. Amen. All, I mean, the... Even the fabric on what you're wearing. Everything about you, God knew. But he does not intervene unless we invite him. Because of free will. Ask and I shall do it. You have to ask. Why, if it's God's will and he's going to have his way then why does he even have us pray? Obviously, it's not set. Everybody, you know, that's like, that's just logic 101. If I'm not going to get an answer to prayer and I don't need to pray, why would I do it? If I don't need to work, why would I go to work? So if, if God's not answering prayer today because he's, he's not feeling well, then why would we pray? I'll come back later. You know, when you're feeling better. You're in a, you know, you, I can feel there's a little bit of an edge about you, Lord. I'll just wait till tomorrow. You know, not a good time. No, no, no. God is waiting for us to ask. Jesus said this, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. And you're waiting for the waiver. You're waiting for the fine print in the next verse, and there is none. There's no asterisk where you go down to the bottom and the disclaimer. Sometimes God doesn't do it, or 
Sometimes he doesn't hear you. And what you're going to find is that every day is an opportunity. Every day is a decision you make to either make history or sit on the sidelines and watch someone else do it. I have the spirit of David on me. And when I come to the battle line with food for my brothers and I see an uncircumcised Philistine mocking and profaning the living God and the armies of the living God, not circumcised, which is a sign of covenant, someone who is uncovenant, and I see them defying the armies of the living God, then I'm going to say something. I'm going to say, is anyone going to stand up and stop this? Yeah, thank you. At least I got one person. <laughs> All of you have this in you. You have a fight in you. Do not let up right now. Do not. Do not stop. You're about to hit a gusher. Amen? Okay. All right. I want this CD. This was really good. So, all right. How are we doing on time here? Whoa. Man, it's about time to worship again. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the booklet I gave you. This is the vision that the Lord has given Kathy and I and our staff. And it has all the different... Uh, the vision and the Lord said write the vision out and just present it to the people and so now you have it we have plans and they're really big plans and it involves you because you are warrior notes you are warrior notes and I'm, I'm gonna you know you're gonna see me go to the you know just like just like in the movie you know the the, the guy that just disappears because it was Jason Bourne. And you know, once he, all he's here, and then he's playing the sax, and the next thing you know, he's out the door, and you don't know he's gone for two hours. There's going to come a point where you're going to carry warrior notes. I'm going to do what I'm called to do and lay the foundation, but I want homeschooling. I want grades kindergarten, through bachelors and then on to your doctorate all right I want warrior chat so you can get off Facebook and Spacebook and my face so I want you to be able to talk to, to people between yourselves and, and talk to people about Jesus I want you to be able to build each other up and it just goes on and on. I, all the departments are in there. Um, we have warrior fellowships. We started that in January. So this is the sixth month. And we started out the first month with 780 new house churches, fellowships. Now we're up over 1,000. And it'll just keep growing because we're meeting a need, especially in other countries. You know, the foreign countries like California and <laughs> no all over the world there are people that that's their church and the Lord said just make it a Bible study fellowship where people can invite their friends their bosses their their neighbors and just minister to them study the Bible with us once a week like we do. We provide, we provide the lesson, and the students at our school, they, they facilitate it. We have almost 20,000 students, so we could potentially have 20,000 churches. And we're just taking it slow, and, and we're letting it grow. Okay, so there's all these outrages. We're, we started Warrior Kids. We started the, the Warrior Jet program where kids can go and get simulator time at the conferences. The next one will be in Houston. And we will sign the kids up and they will go through the simulator, but they're gonna to have to go through a little spirit school and learn about God too, before they can fly upside down. They gotta learn about God, you're gonna need that. Okay, but we're gonna, we're gonna start a, we're launching it because 
I want to get kids involved again with something that is, is a parallel to what I saw in the spirit realm and get, learn to teach them discipline. And then I wanted to take them into the space program. And I'm not talking about the space cadets, that these weird people. I'm talking about, I have an astronaut friend who called me and says, I want to join up with you. I have space camp for kids. I said, it's perfect. It's, it's what I wanted. I'd already asked the Lord, but I said, I ain't doing nothing about it, just like everything. I don't do nothing about, about, about anything. When the Lord speaks to me, I go, what do you want me to do? And he goes, nothing, wait. And sometimes I wait 40 years, but it always comes to pass. But this man called me, an astronaut, and said, I want, the Lord told me I'm supposed to pair up with you. I go, you're right. So he's already got all that set up for your kids to go for a week and, and, and um, learn. They're going to even design airports. He says, I'm going to assign them to design airports for their city. I'm going to teach them how, how to market and how to I'm teach them creation. I got moon rocks, Kevin. He said, I got my space suit. Can you believe this? Yeah, you better. Okay, so that's just the kids part of it. Okay, so we have all other programs. We have Warrior Health. We've got health professionals that are going to help us to get back on track with our immune system. Amen? Okay. And that's just to name a few. Any other important ones that I should mention? Warrior Music. Well, have we, we haven't announced that yet, have we? Well, I guess we just did, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do Warrior Music. It's going to be a, a part of the two-year program, which will turn into a four-year program. We're going to train people, kids, big kids, how to play instruments. They'll get their lessons, and then we're going to teach them how to form a group. And we're going to have different groups that will, will cycle through that will be part of the worship. So we're going to train people to do that. Yeah, can you clap? Go ahead. Have fun. <laughs> So the same thing with evangelism, the school of evangelism we're going to start. We're going to train you how to, to uh, evangelistically evangelize. You know, we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to get you out there. We're, going to, we're, we're starting the, the food pantry. Pastor Sixto here has is, is joined us and helped us. And Susan, yes, and we're going to ship pallets of food ahead of time to wherever we're going. And then we're going to hand out food and tell them that Jesus loves them. And... Um, and uh, you might want to come to the meeting this weekend. Here's a burger. Here's, you know. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to just do spiritual things. If that were the case, I, I wouldn't need transportation. I would just be translated. Transported. So it's spiritual and physical together. And it's mental. But not too much on the mental because there are a lot of mental people. I want, to keep, I want to keep them balanced. We're all going to be balanced. Okay, so it's all about the Christian, the, all, the, all the Christian life and about the marketplace. We're, we're going to do warrior marketplace. We're going to teach people how to start a business and do God's business. You know, it, I'm telling you. It, I'm trying to figure out why the, it's all right for the devil's, the devil's children to prosper. People that you could care less. Why is it okay for the people that hate God, why is it okay for them to prosper? Where does this say in the Bible? And I don't know when this happened. I wasn't in the meeting when, and I didn't vote for this, but they made poverty one of the pillars in the church, one of the... Well, you can't sell the Jews on that. They, got, they get wholesale. That's why they, they give you retail, but they get wholesale. They're fine with the Gentiles having retail. <laughs> yeah, see? See how it's the same with health. You pay all that money for health care, but what if, what if you would change your diet? What if you would start eating the Word of God and, you know, don't do anything stupid. My doctor, I tell my doctor, okay, this is what we're working toward. He goes, okay, we'll just keep doing blood tests. And sure enough, he's like, okay, man, something's happening here. 
I go, you better believe it's happening. I got to live to be 120. I got too much to do. And you know what my doctor did? He's Mormon. You know what he said to me and my wife? Can you pray for me and my wife? My wife has had to ask to have surgery on her intestines. I said, sure, we'll pray for you. He held hands with us with his stethoscope. And maskless. And he touched us. And he, we prayed together, right? He believes in Jesus. And I don't agree with that, that particular religion. But he has faith in God. Enough to let us pray for him. And he's watched me be healed. Like, I don't know how many things I've been healed of where he's, he's seen it. He goes, I've never heard of anything. Like, I've never in my practice, I've never heard of anyone getting healed of this. He's, and he's got the, 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 the data right there. <laughs> he's, he one day he called me, he says, you're in kidney failure. I go, not for long. <laughs> he goes, you got to get to the hospital right now. He says, we just got your, your test back. You are in failure. He said, there's something wrong with your liver too. I go, is there anything else you want to get out of your, you know, you want anything else? He goes, you got to get to an emergency room. I says, no, I'm, I'm moving. I'm getting on a plane right now. And my future is in New Orleans and I'm going and nothing's going to stop me. If you want, I will get a blood test as soon as I get there and everything's going to be fine. But I am going to obey God. So I went there and I got my blood test, right? We went and got the blood test. It came back completely negative, which is impossible. And the urine test. He said, I don't know what happened, but you don't have Hashimoto's anymore and you don't have uh, liver problems anymore and you don't have kidney problems anymore. I go, so what's left? I said, let's work on that. So I never give up. Now, Kathy's right here. She's going to come up and share a little bit. And we're going to, we're going to start to worship again. So we're going to, if you want to get ready. But Kathy, you want to get up here. But she has watched all these things happen. She's watched miracles happen. She has miracles happen. We want you to have miracles every day. We want to be a part of the solution to whatever you're going through. We're here to serve you. We're doing this because we actually believe in God, but we believe in you because God has already vouched for you. And we're assigned to be together. Do you get it? And so I would be excited right now because when you pray, you're praying into your future, which is God's now. Come on up, Kef. I know last night the... Uh, we lost the microphone, so I, I want to give it to you. So just share for a little bit, and then I'm going um, to get ready to worship. And, okay. Uh, okay, well, when um, Kevin did mention to me on the way over here that I was going to share, and it's something that I've never really shared before, but I pray that it hits you like it hit me. And um, I believe it is a word of the Lord for all of us or somebody watching. Um, it was kind of woven through what Kevin was ministering to us tonight. Um, it's about, I'd say like the, the main thing, like when you hear the scriptures I read, it's going to, there's going to be some things about riches, but the, the, what the Lord's talking to us about is heart. He really wants us closer to his heart. And um, it talks in Luke 16 um, about true riches. But he says, like, if you can't be faithful in unrighteous mammon, which is money. How can you be faithful with the true riches? And really, what are the true riches? The true riches are Christ himself, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the things of the kingdom. So it's like, it's this tight place the Lord has for us where he wants us to prosper, but he also wants us to have the true riches. And he wants us to be able to function in that. He wants, uh, Kevin mentioned it in that, that we want to be found trustworthy. And really the bottom line is, is when God can trust you with riches and he knows it, it's not going to steal you away from him, then he, just like any of you in a relationship with somebody, you want maybe to be closer to somebody, but yet you're saying, wait a minute, I don't really know if I can trust them any closer than they are. 
but then maybe over time you begin to see their true character and you start to feel safer and you bring that person in close and so although God already gave us Jesus he laid it all on the line already but just like a parent is going to maybe like some of you have kids and you have already set up like an inheritance for them and you know things that are going to be theirs once they grow up but you don't give it to them all at once so um that's sort of like what the lord's wanting me to encourage us all is to excel financially get that part of your heart right and all of us can grow in that area it's a word for all of us he wants there's no lack like kevin said there's no lack of money it's just in the wrong hands but that doesn't mean it's going to automatically come to us because god although we might have all the principles of how to you know give so you know receive but yet if our heart still maybe has some issues he is going to wait for that harvest to come in so we want to be able to prosper because there are so many needs out there and we want to be able to be distribution centers but this this is really what hit me was in revelation and it's it's interesting because kevin mentioned about the lukewarm church but this just this scripture if you just listen to this um it's in 18 it's right after the um anyhow just listen to this so it's in uh, revelation 3 18 and he says i counsel of the to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich and raiment that thou white raiment that thou may be clothed clothed like clothed like pure and white he wants us to invest and buy what's pure and true and if you're going through a fire in your life don't freak out embrace the fires say lord if this thing is not you know what's going on i don't like what i'm going through but lord i want to be purified and i'm not talking about false humility where you say like okay i'm suffering for jesus when you're, it's something he already paid for on the cross i'm just talking about things in our personality that maybe like we get pricked you know just let him work that out i don't it's just so strong to buy that pure gold that's been tried in the fire you know stuff um that you do for the lord i mean we you know i'm i don't want to take too much longer but we could do a million things like these guys they do a food pantry okay a lot of people do food pantries but they don't do it they just do it because they think that's what god wants them to do is what you're doing what god wants you to do are you standing on the um the pure sapphire stone like these guys they're going to worship and they're going to worship from the fire okay so when they i'm going to step down as soon as i finish here they're going to begin and you step on you just say lord if there's anything in me that's unclean unpure not of you i repent i don't want it i want the pure i want the true i want the fire in my life i want that holy fire let's just stand up father just cleanse us lord we repent we repent of anything that's taken our gaze off of you we repent we repent we thank you for that the blood of jesus we just receive that cleansing of the blood of jesus and we say lord we want that the pure gold tried in the fire we want our raiment we want our we want to be white shiny hot white hot fire white hot fire white hot fire white hot fire we want to stand before you lord spotless because you paid the price for us there's no excuse for us not to stand before you spotless on that day when you return and you are returning you're returning you are returning lord we thank you lord you are returning you are returning your your word is true father thank you lord we just worship you lord i just gonna put this microphone down and just i want you guys to just enter in see yourself on the sapphire stone see yourself before him face to face nothing between you and him no distractions face to face in the holy place 
face to face in the holy place face to face to face to face to face to face in the holy place before his face no shame no blame no shame your glory reign lord the reign of your glory reign hallelujah hallelujah thank you father grab your communion cup in just a moment as Kathy said we're going to invite everybody who wants to come to the altar to worship but take your communion cup let's reverently hold it before the Lord let's take the bread together Father we thank you that you sent your son who is a lamb of God that took away the sin of the world there is no sin that you didn't cover there's nothing that you did not take on your body that couldn't be healed and we thank you for the healing presence of the Lord that's flowing through this room right now and all over the world. We thank you for your healing presence. Driving out sickness and disease. Every bit of pain goes now in the name of Jesus. But Lord, we reverently hold up this wafer saying we remember, we thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for us. And we take it together in Jesus' name. As Kathy prayed with us, we thank you for the opportunity to ask for mercy. We repent before you. You, you said in your word in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every single person that repents leaves here clean and pure before you. Lord, we lay it at the altar. We lay it at your feet. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood that washes us white as snow. Thank you for having mercy. Thank you for captivating us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus right now. Let's partake together. Kevin and Kathy, I want to invite you. Please don't come on the stage, but please feel free to come up to the altar and just worship the Lord with us.
got full access, full access, we won't be denied. Swing wide, swing wide, swing wide, all you doors, swing wide, swing wide. Swing wide, swing wide. Cause we have full access, access granted.
so much for what you're doing. We acknowledge you now by your spirit. Minister to us. We've ministered to you. Now minister to us, Father. Touch us. Heal us. Father, we don't want to hurt anymore. We want to, we want to forgive. We want to let go of the hurt. We lay it down right now. We lay it down. We lay down offense. We, we lay down the hurt that's in our hearts. The Lord wants us to go on. I forgive those who have trespassed against me. I forgive. I let offense drop. Father, the prize that's set before us is much greater than the sin that tries to entangle us, the offense that tries to slow us down. We let it drop right now. <laughs> You're a good God. You're a good God. <laughs> You're a good God. You're a good God. Hallelujah. Lord, as we're gathered together here, just like it says in Malachi, 
It says that those who gathered together and spoke well of the Lord, a book of remembrance was written about them, that they had agreed that God is a good God and has spoke well of them. And those people will be remembered forever, Lord said. They'll be gems in my, my crown forever. I'll remember them. Lord, we're part of that. We want to be known as those who did not back off. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. You can go another day. Come on, you can go another day. You can go another step. You can breathe another breath. You can love. You can love one more time. Father, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I break the power of every demonic spirit working against your people. Right now, I take authority in the name of Jesus, and by the blood of Jesus, I command every evil spirit to go now. In Jesus' name, I command you, you foul lying devils, go in Jesus' name. Stop harassing God's people. I break your power. Jesus said we're going to trample on you, trample on serpents and scorpions, and we're going to have power over all the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm us. Come on now, you're the redeemed of the Lord. Let's say so. Come on, hallelujah. Say so. Say so. Say so. Hallelujah. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Come on now, he's putting you over. He's putting you over. Up and over. Up and over that wall. to go a little further we're going to dig a little deeper we're going to go a little further we're going to dig a little deeper we're going to go a little further and we're going to dig a little deeper and we're going to come face to face with you that's the name of the song we're going to dig a little deeper we're going to go a little further we're going to come face to face with you. we're going to come a little further we're going to come face to face face to face with you we're gonna dig a little deeper. We're gonna come a little further. We're gonna face to face and face to face with you. We won't be stopped and we won't quit. We're gonna dig a little deeper. We're gonna come a little further. We're coming face to face and face to face with you. We won't be stopped. We won't be stopped. We're gonna dig a little deeper. Your arm does not fall short. Your arm does not fall short. We can reach our hand out to you and you reach it out to us. It does not fall short. It does not fall short. It is full stretch. Our arm is fully stretched to grab your hand. Oh, Abba. Oh, Abba. We want more. We're pressing in. We want more. We're reaching our arm out. Our hand is 
reaching out. It does not fall short to reach out and grab your hand, to press on, to go further, to go further, to go further. We're reaching out and we're taking on. We're grabbing by the reins. We're pulling forward. We're going the distance. We are going. We are going. We are going. Oh, Abba. 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 You do not fall short. You do not fall short of your glories. You do not fall short of the mysteries that become Father, your word has spoken tonight. The word was spoken. 
that we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. That you have all things already in alignment for us. That we must always, all we have to do is open our mouths and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Lord, you have a destiny in store for every single one of us. There are mountains that we're going to climb. And we're going to enjoy the valleys, but we're going to climb and conquer mountains. Nothing is impossible for us. Nothing will be beheld from us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the blessings that is upon our lives. We thank you that you have always been faithful to us. And us now in return, we desire nothing more than to be faithful to you, Lord. And we just thank you. We thank you for all that you have given. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, take territory, take territory, take territory. You walk in the authority that he's given you. Take territory in Jesus' name. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord is saying, receive, receive, receive. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. It's time to release. Time to release. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for touching your children, oh God. Yes, Lord, your fresh anointing. Your fresh anointing. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for divine destiny in you. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba. Ishameleha sora. Ihardomehi chamble. On sonye. Yeah, Lord. From deep within. Yeah, deep calling to deep. Thank you, Abba. Urahaishi. Sura meheta yo. Lord, let this, this that we're feeling right now, this that is entered into us, and this that we are carrying right now, let it not diminish one hour from now, 20 hours from now, one day from now, one week from now, one month from now. Father, we want this to increase over our lives. We want this to become more and more tangible over our lives. That we are convinced of what the Word of God says about us. We are not looking at the world or expecting anything for the world. We are notifying the world that we are taking our territory. We're notifying the world that we have the authority that's already been given us. We're not looking for authority. We already walk in authority. And we thank you, Father, for what you have given to us. Lord, you told us that we are carriers of the divine nature of God. Father, I ask right now for every person that is in this room, Lord, that every one of them will speak out loud right now. I carry the divine nature 
of my heavenly Father. I am a conduit of my Father's love to this world. Lord, surge it through me. I will not hold on to it. I will allow it to flow freely because I need more and more and more every day of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I mean, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for everything that was said and done in this place tonight. And Lord, as we leave and we go about the north, south, east, and west, let us be contagious to every person that we encounter. Lord, let people just come near us and say, what is it about you? What are you carrying? And Lord, they will come near and we will say, come. Let me speak to you about my heavenly father. Let me show him. Let me show you what he's done for me, what he's doing for me. Come, come. The Lord has called us to make disciples, not decisions. Disciple is very simple. What he has done for you, you want to declare it to someone else and ask him if they would like to receive the same thing. Amen? decision is just a number but the most important thing after that decision is the discipleship and what Kevin and Kathy were talking about that's the most important thing about warrior notes is you are being discipled to become disciplers you're not going through a school just to learn some head knowledge this transformation is happening so you become disciplers amen we know that the Lord is coming sooner than we expect and anticipate. So we got to get busy about our Father's business. Amen. And so, Father, I thank you for every person that is in this room today with us and those that had to leave early. Lord, I just ask your blessings be upon them and that the peace of God will always be about them. And, Lord, that you will shine your face upon them and grant them peace in all that they do. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, shalom, the peace of God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, we thank you guys so much for being here, and we know there are great things in store, and please keep looking on the website, keep in touch on Facebook, and we know more announcements to come and more details about the schools and different parts of Warrior Notes, amen? But we thank you all for being here. God bless you all. We know the angels will be about you guys in the north, south, east, and west as you travel home safely. Amen? Amen. God bless.